We're now taking a look at Blue Label Telecoms, a distributor of prepaid secure electronic tokens of value and transactional services within emerging and developing economies. Of course, this company assists those consumers that want to load prepaid airtime on their cell phones, prepaid electricity and the like. They've got a market cap of 3.9 billion, price earnings of 10, dividend yield 2.3. Listen, let's come to you first. Well, one of the attractions to this company, they've got 140,000 presences around the country, points of sale where they already sell airtime and they sell prepaid electricity in those markets where they can. But the ability to plug in another one, two or three other assets to sell is really their leverage in a sense going forward. Well, no, I, I, I see it slightly differently. I think they have a very good established presence in South Africa, but you know, their big move is into India. Uh, they have exited Nigeria because they were largely in with Telcom and we know what happened on that one. Uh, I wouldn't be so at all surprised though to find that you know, in the next set of, of, of results they don't say that we went back to Nigeria you know, on a different ticket. Uh, but, but the Indian side, I mean if you've got a, a, a situation where people are going to need much like what we have in South Africa, um, you know, the ability to prepay and it all works and it works well, and you can do that through an established infrastructure. Uh, you know, if there's anything that can double, quadruple, and quintuple, you know, whatever the revenues are, and the, you know, it, it is moving into another country. With all the caveats of that, I mean, we don't understand, you know, necessarily the fine fine details, but I do think that's a, an extremely uh, easy easy thing to do, uh, given the the basis on which it is done. In other words, it's a it's a technology item. It's not a people on the ground. It's not a, a, a you know huge premises type thing, and it certainly isn't a transport infrastructure requirement. Yeah. So I can see no reason why this can't clone and, as I said, clone seven or eight times over. Yeah, and exactly, it's just about points of sales. And listen, made a very important point there with the likes of India because they've only got 90,000 points of sales in India, and we know what kind of growth could be experienced there. But Africa, big question mark. Are you less bullish about Africa? Well, very not bullish about multi-links, obviously, in Nigeria. <laughs> it just hasn't worked, yeah. of course. So they still got that issue to sort out. But it also shows you how things can go wrong. Now, this company has been in other parts of Africa. Mozambique, for example, also hasn't gone well. So India at the moment is kind of a break-even situation, and that is really where the blue sky lies in India and potentially in, uh, in Mexico. The biggest well, big cash transfers happen between North America and Mexico, UK and India, for example, yeah. and this is the pots they're trying to, to tap into with their um, money wallets, so as to speak. So the, the one side of the business, selling airtime, you know, that's a traditional space quite strong in South Africa, but is that the next level of growth? It's really moving into a new sphere, but there's a lot of competition potentially in this. In, in Africa, it's very evident with regards to that. In fact. Well, it's evident, it's but also moving from just selling, and you see how difficult it is, how slow the growth is necessarily from switching from prepaid cell phone to, let's say, electricity, or whatever it might be the next and next. That, that process takes quite some time. But they're also trying to move into this uh, cashless uh, wallet phase. But there, that, that space might be c quite competitive. So it offers a lot of blue sky, but they're not alone on this space. There's a lot of potential com competition. How do they take there. market share, though? Uh, how do they gain market share? Well, the shares? whole idea, of course, is that you will have funds on your wallet, but there's huge cell phone companies in this place that yeah. ultimately might compete with them. Uh, I keep on thinking I'm going to see a cell phone company getting a banking license one day. Absolutely. And um, it's well, a matter of time. I can't see why not. Yeah. Well, maybe they buy a bank. <laughs> I must tell bank. you, cell phone companies are actually allowing you to do airtime transfer from your cell phone. I know because it's a bane of my life with my sister. I'm constantly transferring airtime for my cell phone. So technology is getting far uh, cleverer, if I could say that. Ex exactly right. So that's maybe a bit of a risk to the, to the model that they uh -huh. potentially are running. Okay. Hot or not, uh, for you, listen, Blue Label Telecoms. Uh, absolutely. As I said, if there's anything that can quadruple from here, it would be this one. Okay, short and sweet. Paolo. No, I'd, I'd be a little wary uh, going forward on this. Okay, so wary, in other words, not hot, not buying? N no. Uh, I look, I think they have a, a great model for this present time, uh, but I'd be a little concerned about the, the future and the potential competition coming into their space. Simon? There, there, there are risks out there, and I, I think India sits on a knife edge. But if I, I, I just, I, I like them. I like the way they think. I mean, for example, they discovered that they, were, they had a whole lot of cash, and they were getting really bad interest rates for it. So they went and bought more airtime at a better discount and got a better deal out of that. Yeah. That's clever management. I'm always a fan of clever management. They're going to pay me a bit to hold it. The PE is not too hectic. I'm going to give it a hot.
hot. Fantastic. Sure, okay, we've got <laughs> very divergent views uh, today. So I think, listen, over to you. I know that when it comes to hot stock picks, and that's our next segment of the show, you actually pick one of the three that were discussed. Which is your hot stock pick? Oh, Blue Label, as you, as you heard. I, I, I was lukewarm towards the others. Yeah. Uh, but that one, I really think, has, has the power to do it. Okay, would you be buying right now at these levels and hold, buy and hold? Yes, I would. Uh, the price has come down, and, and I see no reason why one would not want to start nibbling. Of course, it'll take you a long time to build a sizable chunk of yeah. this because it is relatively small. Yeah, indeed. Okay, Paolo, your hot stock pick. My hot stock would be Vodacom tonight. Okay. And uh, easily to build a stake there, no problem <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> so you can go in and do it quite quickly. <laughs> but I think the reality of Vodacom is. Some time ago, they, they built the infrastructure for the cell phone business. One probably didn't think today, and I'm sure they didn't at the time, that they'd get the second wind of all this data moving yeah. through through their networks, which is a, a second wind to their to their business. Of course, what is the third wind? But everyone's and jumping on the data bandwagon, though. Yeah, but what is going to get further. Vodacom the, the competitive edge? Well, ultimately, there's limited players in the market. They have the greatest South African market share. And where do we take the cell phone? It's hardly a cell phone anymore. You're walking around with a computer. It's all the smartphones now. And where does that take you? So it's opened up a whole lot of uh, further possibilities. And you just mentioned why doesn't a cell phone company take a bank? Very possible. <laughs> OK, Simon, better come out or not. I, I, I like them. I like the, 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 the mobile players. I mean, data ultimately becomes a commodity. And that's fine. As Paula said, you've built the network. And, and, and now you just put the bits and bytes across the network mm -hmm. and you charge for them. And the price is going to come down. But the cost is in. They've done it. They've sunk their costs. So okay, they're so, going fine. so what is your exposure to uh, the telecom space? Is it through Vodacom? Is mine is, MTN? Uh, mine is, is MTN. My preference has always been MTN because of Vodacom, because of Vodafone. They, they're restricted in their territories. They can go to MTN. has got a much broader footprint, 21 countries, uh, many of them, such as Nigeria and the like. Afghanistan, not yet as saturated as Africa. We have more SIM cards in South Africa than we have human yeah. beings. And it's like three for my nephew, and he can't even talk yet. <laughs> so it, 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 I've always looked at, 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 at uh, MTN. But I mean, broadly, if we look at either of them, they're both going to move to that same space where data is going to just be there. So it's going to be the cash card. So would you be buying Vodacom now? Sure. And these guys are going to become massive dividend players in time. Okay. That's going to be their killer. Listen, uh, hot or not for you on Vodacom? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm behind it. I like its dividend yield and I like the basis of the business. And certainly they are the dominant, one of the dominant players. Um, I, I uh, take Simon's point as well. You know, their growth is limited, so perhaps we, we, we prefer something else. And really, really, that's that's one of the choices that that, that people are, are are fortunate enough to be able to have in this country is two, two or three good uh, uh, mobile operators. Yeah. Okay, so Paolo, does that mean you, you wouldn't be holding MTN, or would you hold MTN yeah. and Vodacom? We actually and hold both of them. Pre preference to Vodacom, Vodafone, big parent, yeah. hard technology. You probably need that parent. Okay, so you'd, you'd, you'd be holding <laughs> both. Okay, fantastic.